he was going to, he had to leave to go to Canada. And I says, why are you leaving to go to Canada, husband? He says, I don't know. And he says, who are you going to see? He says, I don't know. And why are you going and what are you going to talk about? He says, I don't know. She says, I don't think I like this. Are you meeting another woman? He says, no, no, that's not what this is about. I don't think this is a woman. <laughs> she followed him all the way to the airport, make sure there wasn't some woman taking off with him. How did we even make contact? Well, it's a long story of many prophecies. But one day, my wife walked into our computer room. All of the computers had been turned off. We were careful to turn them off every night. And she, she walked in through the door. All of a sudden, the computer turned on on its own. And you know the music it makes. Ding, da, da, da. You know? And, she, and she, she thought, whoa. So right away, she came and got me. And she says, Jerry, I think you need to come in here. So I walked in. And I said, okay, uh, what's going on here? And she says, the computer turned on on its own. And I could feel the charge. I could feel the electricity. I could feel the power. And I said, okay, this is not accidental. This is spiritual. What I'm receiving as this person, and I mentioned the person in the prophecy, that we are supposed to find, who lives in California, who's an artist, because they received this word from God, that he is on the internet, and we're going to find him. I told some of the church people about it. David took it really to heart. He got right on the internet and started searching. And after a short uh, few days, he gave me a call. He says, I think I found the person. And I said, well, uh, you know, you might have. But don't be disappointed if you didn't. He says, he, I believe when you see this man's art, you'll know this is the man. So he gave me the link. I got on it. As soon as I saw the, I didn't even see the man. I saw the art. As soon as I saw the art, I says, my God, I could feel, I could feel the centricity, I could feel the electricity, I could feel the syntones in that art. How Just even viewing it second-handedly from the video screen, or the TV screen, or the computer screen, however you like to call it. And I said, this is the man. So I called him. And I said, you don't know me, but I know you. You need to come and meet me. I'm in Canada. He says, could you say that again? I said, you don't know me, but I know you. You need to come and meet me. I'm in Canada in the Edmonton area. He says, okay, now, what is your name? I said, Jerry Lee. He says, and where should I come? I said, you just come to the airport and I'll take you where you're to go. Okay. So he says, I couldn't do that before blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I said, that would be fine. So I said, is that the date we shall put? He says, well, I have to make sure I can get a ticket. But he says, I will do that. Come. He didn't ask any other questions. That's why he didn't know any other questions. <laughs> so when he got up before this wheel of, 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 uh, this, uh, uh, wheel of medical health uh, that I was going to speak at, uh, which I'll tell you in a little bit. Um, and, and he was, um, you know, explaining that to them. He told this story about how when he got to Edmonton and he went before the, um, uh, the, the um, uh, immigration people, they said, oh, okay, and why have you come to Canada? He says, I don't know. <laughs> and then he says, okay, and um, uh, who is this person? Can you tell me something about whoever this, the, this person is you are to me. He says, I can't tell you, I don't know. They said, okay, can, is, is, is this business? He says, I don't know. So he says, could we see your card? He says, I'm an artist, I don't have a card. And this lady said, this is very difficult. He says, but if you would like to turn to the, on your computer, and he gave him the website, 
you can see who I am. She turned it on, and all these incredible, gorgeous paintings came on, and you could see her, he says, I can see her swallow, and just stare at it, and she says, <laughs> okay, and she reached over and took the, pa the, the paper and stamped it, wow. and said, welcome to Canada. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, when we got in the meeting with Razuli, and there was Dan and I, and there was uh, uh, the Fullers, we were sitting around with him, and I had just told his wife about this computer thing that had happened, and how that that was what made the uh, connection to how we found him. And then about an hour later, we were in this meeting, and we're sitting there talking, and all of a sudden, his computer that is turned off goes, da -da -da -da, and automatically comes on on its own. And he says, oh my. He says, I know I turned off that computer. And Brenda spoke and says, I saw you turn it off. And I said, well, I saw you turn it off too. That computer was off. Because he had been showing us something on it. So he says, okay. He says, let me make sure that this thing is off now. He turns it off. And I says, isn't it interesting when this happened? He said, yes it is. And I explained to him, I just got through telling your wife about that experience. So we go on talking for another 30, 40 minutes. And all of a sudden, ding, dang, dang, it comes on again. Right when we are talking about this book. And he says, this never happened on this computer in all the years I have been using it. This never, ever happened before. He said, this is a sign from God. Hallelujah. So afterwards, he says, okay, Jerry Lee, let's put this together. He says, I will furnish the paintings. He said, my paintings are selling for $10,000, $12,000, and up, some of them for twenty. They know there had just been some people come there and spent, how much was it? Quite a bit of money? 70000 $80,000 of paintings that they bought from him just shortly before we had come. He's a famous guy. He's does he's writing this new movie that's coming out, um, uh, 2012. He has done a lot of the artwork for that. Wow. He's famous. He lives in a place sort of called the Hollywood area, uh, just a few blocks from where the famous... Um, uh, John Wayne. John Wayne. John Wayne's house used to be. And there's all these very rich people in it. So he says, I will furnish all these paintings. But he says, then he says, maybe you can furnish the money uh, to, for, for, the, for what you've got to put up to the publishers. And I said, how much is that? He says, $40,000. He, he says, could you do that? I said, oh, sure. <laughs> By faith, I said, oh, sure. Because for sure, I couldn't have done it any other way. <laughs> I was using the counter sense. That's right. Blessed be the name of God. So sure. He says, now, and I don't know if he detected a small little swallow in my throat or not, but he says, there is another way that you can do it. He says, I will reduce the price of these paintings. Incredible special. Seven hundred dollars a piece and he said I will I think we should throw in the book that we are doing now what is this book that we're doing on one page he puts his, his, his picture on the other page I interpret what the meaning of his art is and what it is actually saying and what that particular picture means. I've already done a few for him and sent it to him and he was freaked out. He said it's incredible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somewhere approximately in the middle of October, I'm going to be going to this big presentation that he's doing and he's going to be doing all this artwork and I'm going to be uh, presenting some of these interpretations before the, people, the last time he did it, he had over 1,500 people there. Wow. We're going to be, so that's in the making sometime in October. 
So I said, I said, you know, I like that second plan of uh, me selling some of these paintings. <laughs> so I said, what's coming to me, if I could get people to buy three paintings, and he says, and every one will be signed by me. And he says, and then we will both sign the book. And they will get a free copy of this beautiful book. Wow. And I says, what do you think? How about if we give these people three paintings for $1,800? These incredibly gorgeous. All of them will have an interpretation written. So I says, you see, I would not have to sell that many. Yes. Sold. 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 Okay, there's, there's one right there. Praise God. Thank you. Said, that's a wonderful activity. I will have to sell that many of those of those three paintings, which are so beautiful, and they will be on canvas. They're not they're they're prints, but they look just exactly like the real thing, and they're on canvas. And he was going to personally sign every one. And uh, there'll be three of them. Um, okay, and plus they will get this copy of this book. And then that way I can raise enough money to pay the publisher to print this book. So that's what I'm going to start doing uh, uh, as God will lead and help. Uh, uh, we're already working on it. I have the lawyer right now putting together uh, a memorandum of agreement. And I'll have that this coming week. Send it off to him. He's already outlined an agreement, beautiful agreement. Uh, he wants to totally share the income. Now, he said that he had just done a book with another person and that book took in what how many millions was it it was uh 300 million over 300 million over 300 million dollars that book that he had just done took in over 300 million dollars and uh he says now i didn't split that with him i basically just charged him a fee but he said we'll split it jerry Lee. and he says even though it's all my paintings you know, he said, you just do this. He said, whatever comes in, he said, half will go to your ministry to get your, 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 your writings published. And the other half, he said, will come to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, hallelujah. hallelujah, praise the name of God, Amen. thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm on my way. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Awesome. I believe that God has a plan to open the door. I don't know that that is the total plan. I don't know how that will all, how many millions it will sell. But, you know, the guy's not stupid, and his work is phenomenal. Yes. And he has a huge following. And, um, and, and so that is, that's happening. That's in the making. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know where all the finance will come to make this all happen, but I just believe that it will happen. Just like this lady here that just said, Count me in. I think there will be other people like that that will say, count me in. Uh, we go to these meetings. We went to all these meetings I went to. Not one of them did we take an offering at. Not one of them. For 71 years, I've been preaching this word. And I have, whenever we took offerings, it went to the church or to other people. Rarely, rarely did any money come to me. I worked and earned my own money. It's going to be a little different now that I'm not doing that kind of thing, uh, secular work like I was doing. But I'm telling you, God has a plan. And it doesn't have to be make you look like an idiot. It can be, it can be so you can, you can keep your dignity. And I think God has a plan so that we can keep our dignity and that we can get this message done, get all of these words written. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are way, way over a thousand uh, tapes that we have of minute, yeah. uh, things preached. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. There are piles of things written. Not to mention all the writings that no one has ever even seen that I've done on all the math equations of logistical rhythmatics and, 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 and of how to instantly be able to resolve primes. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I have a whole book now that's probably got it's probably as thick as this is with information uh, on Artura. Uh, and um, next month when we do this slideshow, I plan to give the number of it. Uh, I plan to be able to tell people the, the, the number of it because there are 
actual descriptions of locations of stars, you know? And, and, and tonight we're going to talk about uh, Draconis, the Drago constellation. And, you know, that, that, that dragon constellation has stars in it, and, and uh, they have particular designations. They have magnitude, uh, they, they, they have spectrum, and they have position. And uh, I'll show you later tonight just how that, that would work. I'll give you some numbers and show you how that, that would give any astronomer to take those numbers and could, could go and select their camera or their telescope and beam in and find that just in an instant where that particular star is if they have those, those numbers. And so uh, uh, we're going to talk on that kind of thing here before very long. But in the meanwhile, I just want to share with you the positive things that are in the making. And, and you know, we just had, we had this, this one lady, and you may have noticed her on the last blog that I was doing about UFOs, and how she says, well, I need to know some more information on our space brother. You know, she's married to an, a, a scientist uh, who is in a, who's into atomic fusion. And when we were at that meeting, we had all of these top engineers, a doctor, and, and, and people like that, uh, to a top scientist. Uh, there is, people are being drawn uh, to come into this. There, there's a new mind wave that is happening out there. Hallelujah. And you can just feel it. And you can just feel it with these people. I mean, th there, is this, there is a most beautiful thing that is happening after all these years and, and you know, and people just came, and she just came up to Jan. We never even mentioned money. We never mentioned taking offering. And she wrote out a check for $500 and handed it to Jan, says, I want this to go. And then all kinds of different people just start coming and writing checks or giving cash or buying books. And it was just spontaneous without having to ever mention it. And that's the way I want it to be. I don't have to get up and say, hey, we need money to live on. We need. I don't want to have to do that. I want it to just come by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it will. I believe that yeah. God has a plan. God knows. Blessed be the name of God. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Same thing when I went to Oregon. I went there. I never mentioned money one time. Never said anything about it. But people just started coming up, handing money, just on their own. I got a call here the other day, and this fellow said to me, he's been on the blogs, he said, I want you to know I consider you my pastor. And I said, well, thank you. I said, if, if that's how you feel that you need, you need a pastor, here I am, you know. And he says, he says, I believe God has spoken to me. And he says, um, right now, he said, my business is not doing that well, but says, I'm going to start paying you tithes. And, and he says, so how can I do that? I says, well, I can just give you the checking account, and you can just, I've, I got a U.S. checking account, so when I go to the U.S., I said, you can just put it in that account. The, the banker told me, all you need is those numbers, and you can just put it in there, anywhere in the United States. And he says, okay. He says, I'll just go to the bank right now and put some money in. He went to the bank, and he put over $200 in. I don't think that's junk. I think that's pretty yeah. fantastic. Yeah. No, Amen. Yeah. I looked at that and said, hey, praise God, 200 bucks, over 200 bucks. <laughs> Amen. Why am I telling you these things? I'm not telling to post a brand. I'm telling it to encourage you that God is not leaving us out. Yeah. That God is by the Spirit doing this. I never ever on the blog said mention money. I've never said, hey, you people need to give money. But God is suddenly making people. I have had over the last several months, uh, not the last several months, but over the last year, probably a half a dozen people that have written me on the email and said, I would like to give some money to your ministry. And I never even wrote them back. Because at that time I was still working. It was only April 15th that I decided this is it. I am now going to dedicate the rest of my life just to doing this work on the manifest. To get this done. To get it out. To get it finished. Jen came up to me and she just said the most beautiful thing. It just stuck in me so gorgeously. She, you know, she came up and she said, Jerry, she said, this thing has come to me. And she says, it's just so deep in me. She says, 
we've got this work to do. Get this message out. She says, let's finish it. Hallelujah. Let's finish it. Uh -huh. That just hit me. That just came over me. I thought, oh my God. That is so incredible that you said that. My whole body was just trembling with it. Uh -huh. Let's finish it. I think that's the message of the hour for this group. Amen. I think that's the message of the moment for all of the people who have been bonded into this, believing in this, hoping in this, who have been Melchizedek's in this. Hallelujah. Let's finish it. Amen. Yeah. Let's get Amen. this thing done. Let's get this message out. That's Let's right. get these books out. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's finish it. Praise the name of God. Amen. Okay. Wow, I'm getting stirred up. <laughs> I'm stirred up. Praise the name of God. Now, you know, there are so many beautiful things we start talking on these lists. But what I've done here is I have made another list. And I need some kind of a box or something. And I, I've, I've taken these, all these little things. Some of them are blank. If you pull a blank, that means for sure we're not going to be working on your destiny tonight or today. <laughs> but if you pull one of these out, and it's got to be so you can't look in and see one that's got an X on it. I've got to have some kind of a box, a box or a cup. Something a that, I can, that I can put these in. A cup. And then I'm going to stir it up, and I'm going to allow people to, um, uh, to reach in. And if you get one that has an X on it, and you want to, doesn't mean you have to, uh, have me wait for the Lord on you to see if I can receive what that list on the fringe of your uh, belief is uh, and and be able to share some of that with you uh, then I will do it so there there are several X's in here and that's the little pile and that's how we're going to do it because I don't have time to do everybody mm -hmm. I just have time to do a few people and I mean I haven't even got started yet on this other list with the stars. Praise God. And at some point here, gee, uh, well, they'll be able to see that. What? See, they'll be able to look in there and they'll be able to say, oh, there's one with an X. Just hold it out to them. Pardon? Just hold it out. look away like this. Yeah, if they did that, I guess that would work. You know how people are. You can't really trust them. <laughs> okay, well, we can try that. Trust you, boss. <laughs> Someone say praise God. Praise, praise God. God. All right. Okay. So, um, there's a beautiful verse in John chapter 10, verse 27. It says, my sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me. Hallelujah. And this is in connection with he, when he says, I'm going to go away. And they said, where will you go, Lord? He says, I'm going to the Father's house to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And this is a literal planet is a literal place. Now the interesting thing about this is that this particular place is located very close to the dragon. Now the dragon is a huge constellation. It's huge. It is so huge it has galaxies in it. And I'm going to read you some of the stars that it has in it. And I'm going to tell you some things about astronomy, about the Alpha, the Beta, the Gamma. These are three different kinds of magnitude. The Alpha is the brightest. Next is Beta, then Gamma. But that has a dual meaning too. Because Alpha, Beta, Gamma in the Greek alphabet is equivalent to A, B, C in the English alphabet. So on the one side, when we say that we are going to also make a book, that is the alphabet of gamma, we're saying that's going to be the A, B, C. It's not the whole alphabet. It's going to be this 
beginning simple thing that we're going to put out to the children and the young people are people with dense minds. Oh, it's going to be, some of it will be in, in, in maybe even in car too, you know, and some very interesting things that will be done. So that's the one side of it. But on the other side of it, in the counter sense, but still on the fringe of the physiological or the physical world, it is the, the highest magnitude, the second to the highest magnitude, and then the third to the highest magnitude. And what does that remind you of? That reminds you of this, if you think of it. The hundredfold, the sixtyfold, and the thirtyfold. Does everyone follow that? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Okay. All right. Now, let's just look at this and let's just see what we got going as we begin to get into this. But before, I'm just wondering, I see exactly what time it is. It's quarter after 12. If we would want to take a break and let people have their snacks and lunch or whatever they have prepared, I don't know. Do you have, do you have stuff up there? You do. So, is there, is People ready, before we really get into all this other thing, we should probably allow people to take that. And so what shall we say? How much time do we need? Uh, you know, if I say 20 minutes, they will take 40. But how, how, what's reasonable to go up there and eat? It's a quarter after, by my walk. What time does someone have? What time do you have? Uh, uh, say it loud enough so I hear you. 12.15. That's what I've got, 12.15. So how about we give people till 1 o'clock? That's 45 minutes or is that too long? That's not. Probably. Go up there, huh? By the time everyone eats. By the time you eat, little you little talk a little bit, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Be back here sharp at 1 o'clock, okay? 1 o'clock sharp, all right. Here it is. <laughs> Okay. I'll try to move here in a pretty good clip, you know, so that we're not just here too long, but still it's going to take a certain amount of time. There's just something interesting I want to throw in. <clears throat> uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 29, it says, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab. Besides, the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Now, you have to understand, in Horeb is where the Ten Commandments came. Mm -hmm. Now I'm saying, well, there is additional that was added to that. Mm -hmm. That is a really, really important scripture, Amen. just for the benefit of those of you that were here and heard yesterday's teaching in the uh, uh, in Deuteronomy and Exodus on the law. Sir, excuse me, what was the citation? That is uh, chapter 29 of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Uh, verses one. Okay. Thanks. Verse one. Also in that same area, it says, um, uh, <clears throat> "The Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear, unto this day." Even at that time, all the revelation that was given to these people, they could only perceive it in the physical sense and none of them ever could receive it in the counter sense. So that's why I said they didn't have the ears to hear, the eyes, or any of that to really perceive it even in that day. And the way it was put in the uh, New Testament, you know, uh, Paul wrote and said that same veil that was over their eyes way back then he said it's still in our time, in my day, still over their, their, their eyes, they cannot see these incredible revelations. And so I think that that is really beautiful to understand and, and a real beautiful thing to have. Amen. Okay, so if you turn with me to Job, the famous Job book, there are some questions answered here. Ask, uh, chapter 38, Many of you have heard these many a time, but we're going to take off here with them. 
And here's what it says in chapter um, 38, verse 31. Can you bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Can you bring forth Mazareth in his season? Mazareth is an old, old name for the Zodiac. Or canst thou guide Arturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Can you set the dominion thereof in the earth? And those are all questions, and it's a list of questions. And I'm wanting to say that the true answer to every one of those is yes. We can, we can do all of those things if we can do it with the counter sense. We can, we can understand uh, what it means when it talks about the sweet influences of the Pleiades. We can, we can bind that to ourselves so that it is an advantage to us. Otherwise, we miss out. And this teaching that I did yesterday, you know, about the praise of God and God exalting our horn so that we can actually, while standing on earth, be by the Spirit in anywhere in the universe. And that we can then link that experience to our earth experience, therefore bringing what was up in heaven to us here on earth. What is bound in heaven is bound on earth. What is loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. And so that to me is just all part of this beautiful thing that yes, we can do. Um, can we bring forth the zodiac in its season? Can, can, can we understand what the zodiac is about, what it really means? This is Bible. This is the Bible. This is a list of challenges. It's a list that God has given to us to say, hey, can you do this? It's not because we can't do it. It's because we can do it. But are you into the counter sense so that you can really understand it? And so that you can really receive it? So that you can really begin to, to put this together? Uh, the Zodiac then, you look at that and you say, well, this is just three or four little things. But if we were to develop this list, and let's just take the one on the Mazara, the, the, which is the Zodiac, if we were to develop that, we would be talking about a circle of signs, which the very word uh, in most interpretations means circle of animals. And some people have a problem with it because they say, well, it's really not just all animals because there's some humans in there. But unbeknown to most people that in the, the book of the Old Testament, it clearly says, I pray that God would manifest a man that he would see that he himself is a beast. So he really is included <laughs> uh, with, with this circle of animals. And I think that, that that is also beautiful. Now those signs, these circles, these, these are signs. And, and in astronomy terms, they're called asterisms. And an asterism is something like the, the, the a Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. You go up there and you see this, looks like a dipper. And that's called an asterism. That is not necessarily, in most cases, it's not a constellation, it's part of a constellation, but not a whole constellation itself. So you have the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Now when I was just a little boy, when I was, well, when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, uh, I would go outside at night and I would stand and I would look up at the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And something inside of me, always connected to those those dippers. I knew there was a destiny there. I knew that there was something there far beyond what most people understood. And I felt connected to that big dipper, that little dipper, you know. And and I knew there was a meaning. It wasn't until many, many years later that I began to understand what that big dipper and little dipper was. And, and you see, the way that things are in the constellations is that um, uh, there is a division of deacons and, and, and houses. And how that works is, let's say that if you have a constellation, then, uh, and it's one of the, the zodiac signs, then, uh, or one of the zodiac members, 
then uh, there's going to be three constellations that are going to be linked to it. And so when you take the 12 and you link three of these constellations to every one of those individual constellations, you end up with 48. And then in addition to uh, those constellations, which because they're not the primary constellation of the zodiac, they are extras. They are the extra three, but they are attached. Uh, they are called deacons. And then when you uh, get into the houses, the houses represents a space of time on the zodiac belt of, of 1,260 years of passing. So if we were to look at that on a time chart, uh, which I think I have here, uh, let's say, for instance, we were looking at it, um, you know, uh, we, would, we, we could start with um, uh, the, uh, Gemini and uh, the twins, and that would that would take us back, uh, uh, you know, quite quite a ways. That would uh, that would go back um, uh, 6,840 uh, years BC, and then if we went to Taurus, the bull, that takes us back to 4320 BC. Um, Eris, the ram, to 2160 B.C. Pisces, the fishes, would be right now. And then uh, in 2160 A.D., Aquarius will come in, the water bearer. And so all of these things are, are very um, uh, meaningful. They have definite um, universal adventure for the minds that are willing to understand that the gospel is written in the stars. Amen. The word of God is written in the stars. Amen. And, and the influences of the Pleiades, and we understand that there were in the beginning there was three three uh, of these um, galaxies, and and that there were assigned to those galaxies uh, were three different groups of angels. And there was there was um, you know the seraphim, the cherubim, and the ophidim. And they were the ones that came to do the creation of which the earth was part of the galaxy that we were in, that the earth is in, including all the, all the solar system with its planets. And so it just gets to be so fascinating and so interesting when you understand that there are all these time cycles. Now when the Bible says, in, and we'll come back to this particular scripture here in uh, Job, but let's... Uh, just jump over to um, uh, to Revelations uh, chapter 12 it says and there appeared another wonder in heaven to say in the universe and behold a great red dragon having seven heads ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven now you just really need to appreciate how huge this dragon is in the in, in the heavens this constellation how huge it is i just wrote down just a few uh, of of the stars um uh, of course uh thurman uh thurman used to be uh, the uh, polar star for earth uh and at the time that that lucifer uh moved according to the book of jude uh the ophanims from the state that they were in to Drago. When he moved them to Drago and took them from where they were, how many people know where they were? That's okay, you know, huh? Arcturus? Yeah, Arcturus, but of course people don't really know where Arcturus is. They think they do with it. They've got Arcturus in, in the Buotis, uh, which there is an Arcturus there uh, in the knee of this of this Buotis man, but that is only part of the story, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, if I can, in a hurry here today. Uh, we'll do a lot more on it next month when we do this um, slideshow. And I will then show you the location of um, the Father's house. But um, anyway, um, this, uh, this uh, 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 Drago, or uh, Draconic uh, list of stars, uh, starts off with Thurban, which was a, um, a polar star 4,800 years ago at the time that Lucifer 
was in charge of, of making this constellation the new home of the Ophidium. And it was the polar star for the Earth. And he knew exactly what he was doing, you know. And the polar star was in one of the coils of this serpent dragon, which is Draco. And, 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 and it was lined right up, not far from, from Polaris, which at that time was not the, the uh, polar star, which it is now. And so there's a, a beautiful story to all of that. Now, uh, uh, then uh, that, that particular uh, star at the time uh, was, had, had a, uh, a luminosity of 135 times the magnitude of light of the sun. 135 times brighter than our sun, if you can imagine that. You know how that you can't even look at the sun very long without getting blinded? Well, this is this star is 135 times brighter, and and is 215 uh, light years away. And uh, if you know what that means, I'm sure you should know. Okay, and um, uh, interesting, located midway, uh, it, it was located midway between the bowl of the Little Dipper and the uh, and the famous. A star, Mizar, which we may be able to get into here after a bit. We'll see. We have the time. Um, then after that came the Beta Draconius, a um, star called Restaban, which is 300 light years away from Earth. Then there's there's uh, the Gamma Draconis, which is called Elcanon, 110 light years, and it's in the head of the dragon. The Delta Stragonia, 75 times brighter than the sun, 120 light years away. Uh, uh, the Zeta Dragonius, 1,500 times that of the sun, 600 uh, uh, light years away. Uh, Eta, and you notice it's using all of these Greek terms because that's the way they did it. A lot of these stars and so forth have got Greek, uh, Greek references. 75 uh, light years away, 40 times brighter than the sun. Uh, 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 Iota Draconius, 100 times, uh, 100 light years away, 45 times brighter than the sun. Uh, Mu uh, Draconius, 100 uh, light years away, eight times brighter than the sun. Uh, and Nu Draconius uh, in the in the quad rectangle of the dragon's head, and it's 120 light years away and 45 uh, um, uh, light years from the Earth. Now. That just gives you an idea of how spread out this is. We are talking about hundreds and hundreds of light years that this dragon spreads out through the heavens. And, and, and this third band, which was, which was the polar star, if we were to give its a, a designation, uh, its magnitude would be 3.64. It's, it's um, um, uh, what they call... Um, uh, spectrum would be uh, A0111 and its position would be uh, uh, 14030 um, uh, 6437 and if I gave that to an astronomer and I said okay 14030 uh, 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 N uh, 6437 uh, he would say, okay, I can get that. He'd bring that right up and he'd be able to go right to that star where that was. Because that is the exact ast ast astronomy number of the location of that star. And so, like, there's a bunch of the stars like that that I could give you and give you those numbers. I've got them up here and tell you where they are, which I'm going to do that very type of thing with the Father's house where it's located when, when we have this next meeting uh, of this slideshow of the stars. I'm going to give you the number of where the closest star is to where this planet, Artura, is circulating in an orbit around about that star. Okay, now how can we know anything? How can we have any kind of Bible to substantiate anything like that? Well, uh, in this very scripture right here, and this is so neat, it says, and the dragon's tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, if you take the head of the dragon and that body and the coils 
and you go all the way down to where the tail is, it's interesting that the tail of the dragon it moves out and around and circles the what is called Urja Minor. And Urja Minor is also called the Little Dipper. And so Urja Minor, the Little, little Dipper, is an asterism. It is not a constellation, but it is a very important place because right there, right off of that, is where Jesus said in the 14th chapter of, of St. John that he was going to take the children uh, to join him uh, in the Father's house called Artura. Now, of course, Artura has, has been misunderstood to its really meaning and has not totally been understood in the factuality of it because they've got the star Arturus. But then you see with the with the astronomers and the biblical people, uh, theologians, uh, they changed Job 38 from saying Arturus to saying the the bear. They changed some of it to say the bear. It doesn't say in the, my Bible. I read it to you. It says Arturus, but in a lot of the versions, it does not say Arturus. It says the bear, and and that is because the word Hebrew word Ash can mean bear. But what they don't understand is that when you take the word bow, like like the Bootes, which is the whole constellation itself, it actually has the meaning, uh, which is the uh, the coming one. And then when you take the word Arturus, it means the same thing. So that was the pairing of it and, and what it actually meant. Well, the coming one, as we teach it in the manifest, is always the one who is, who is, who is coming, and he's always the one who is going away. He comes and he goes. He goes and he comes. And that is the story of the life of Christ. So that even in the wilderness, before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the Bible says that Christ was with the children of Israel in the wilderness. It's right in the Bible. So as we begin to see all these things, and we begin to put this all together, it's there. It's the words in the Bible. This, this beautiful place called the Father's House is located just off the tail of the dragon. Because it, it was where the, 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 the sheepfold, which is part of the name of the meaning of that, this, this, this uh, seven stars of the little dipper also means sheepfold. So this sheepfold, it was the lesser sheepfold. Because the big deeper, the big depot is the greater sheepfold, but there's this lesser deepfold, or sheepfold, you get it straight. And, and so then, in that lesser sheepfold was a very special group of people. And, uh, um, and this is before uh, Enoch was sent there. This is a group that was there. And these were part of the stars then that were cast out of there by the tail and cast down to earth. And that is such, such a gorgeous and beautiful story, such a true and living reality to think that there is there is such a story as that. How now, yeah. this man here that wrote this book, The Witness of the Stars, uh, he is a doctor of divinity. He's a doctor. He's a mathematician. He's a brilliant guy. His father was a brilliant uh, person. Uh, and um, uh, this fellow here uh, has written some things, like uh, he did the critical lexicon and concordance to the English and Greek New Testament. Um, he did a uh, numbering scripture called the Great Cloud of Witnesses, the Witnesses of the Stars. Uh, in one of his greatest works, and you'll be able to witness to this star because you've had one of those, or you know I had one and you used it, the Companion Bible. This is the guy that actually composed and put together, which was an incredible work and was famous because of his almost unbelievable wide scope of biblical subjects that it covered uh, in, in its marginal uh, uh, addendum. Wow. And so he was the writer and the composer of that. That's this guy. I want to read something that he said in this book that is just almost incredible 
I had never read this when I had the revelation. I already had the revelation of the thing about um, the um, Little Dipper and about this uh, lesser fold, the sheep fold, uh, and, and uh, I didn't know that anybody else had such a revelation, but just goes to show you, it's like that time that, that one of the prophets said, that he says, I'm the only prophet. And God said, what are you talking about? I've got 7,000 other prophets who have never bowed to Baal. You're not the only one. What are you talking about? He says, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so we don't ever want to get caught away to think we're the only one. Yeah. This fellow is, here's what he says. Um, he said this revelation about Thurban, which is was the polar star, is way before the time of the Greeks. So even with all the things that the Greeks added uh, to the uh, uh, various star astronomy things, uh, they, they could not possibly, just because of the great extent of time, have known about these things. And the fact that some of these Greeks wrote some, some of, and did some of the various editions that they did, just goes to show how that God's Spirit is working through astronomers and through mathematicians throughout the ages to produce things uh, that they don't even know why they're producing it because the Spirit of God is moving on them to keep the, the truth in the saddle. And it's just a beautiful and gorgeous day. Hmm. And, and, and uh, uh, that is just, uh, just uh, all uh, perfect. Uh, these names that I mentioned, uh, like, like um, uh, you know, this um, uh, ethnonym, uh, which was one of the stars of the head of the serpent, the dragon, um, uh, names that these stars mean from the Arabic means uh, subtle, substance, or subtle, subtle, I'll get it right here. Um, substance. And, and, and have names like, um, you know, uh, uh, enemy of God, and all these kind of names. Uh, it's just interesting that those names would have been given to some of the stars in the dragon which at the same time the dragon is called a dragon, it's also called a serpent because of the elongation of the body. But its head, for sure, is a dragon. Now, when Lucifer took the opening angels to, to Draco, after a while, uh, he became famous with being the proclaimer of that constellation, and even his name got changed so that Lucifer wasn't called Lucifer anymore. He was called the dragon. And that's why he's called the dragon is because of this spatial experience that he had uh, in the universe uh, and, and is still involved. See, the Bible says that one day that Lucifer, the Satan, the drago, is going to be cast out of the heavens and it's going to come down to earth so it says why isn't Satan down here already uh, his influence is down here some of his demons are down here but his main forces are still up there in in, in this uh, constellation now interesting when the flood was going to take place prior to that um, at Enoch's uh, 350th year when he gave uh, when he fathered Methuselah, that at that time uh, uh, he began to get very involved in this thing with uh, with uh, uh, what we call Ziths, uh because he was not because God came and took him in a Zith and took him over and showed him where he wanted his offspring, where he uh, took one him to see where he wanted his offspring to go, and when he came back, he began to, he knew the story. He knew there was going to be a flood. He knew that his offspring was going to be taken. And it was it was going to be taken to to this place called the Father's House that Jesus described, which is in that, uh, um, what's called the Little Bear, or what's called the, uh, that asterism called uh, the, the Little Dipper, uh, or Urja Minor. Uh, all names apply. And so uh, he already knew that. Well, 
Most people say, well, there's nothing like that in the Bible. And I said, yes, there is. I didn't know it for years. But when God kept opening my eyes, all of a sudden I saw it, you know? Because I thought, well, you know, I'd go back and I'd try to read the Old Testament to see where it might say that, that these, you know, that Enoch's people went out and all this is true. But one day, and although God had kept giving me that scripture over and over, I was receiving it like most people do in their, in their natural senses. And I was not receiving it in the counter sense. But one day, all of a sudden, I read that scripture that I had read hundreds of times. In the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. I read that scripture, and basically, what did it say? Yeah. What's going to happen when I come is something that has already happened before. Mm -hmm. That's what that's saying. Yeah. And it says when, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So then he says, now here's what's going to happen. He said, I'm going to send my angels. And there's going to be a meeting. Seven says, oh, okay, so they're going to come down and, and knock on the doors and say, hello, is your name George Thomas? Yes, you're one of the people. I'm an angel from God. Uh, come out here. We've got a ship. We're going to take you out. No, he says, it's not how it's going to be. He says, it's going to be a meeting in the air. This, this, this thing is going to take people up. I'm not going to reveal it tonight how people get from earth to these ships because we're talking about, we're talking about little shuttle vehicles uh, taking people up to the, the mothership, getting them up onto the motherships that will then transport these people before the great asteroid uh, a star the uh, worm falls on the earth and does all that destruction. So it's going to take them up, and he says they're going to gather people from the four corners of the of the of the earth. Oh, yeah. They're going to gather people, and he says, and now this is what's going to happen, and that's what happened before. Really, now you've got the story. You've got the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, this happened before. Yes, there were people that were saved on the ark. That was just eight people. Mm -hmm. But a whole group of people were taken up. And a whole group of people were taken to Artura, a planet in the little star system of the Little Dipper. <coughs> now, what's going on there now? There is a whole whole planet full of the offspring of Enoch. Now if you were to go outside the Bible there's all kinds of other like the book of Enoch and all kinds of other books that would even more support this thing I'm saying. And what's what's happening? Well someone says you know is, is that just like paradise and peace? Well it's wonderful and the people that are there are beautiful people because you know, they live, some of these people live over, over a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years old. But it's not paradise because there's a war going on up there, on and off all the time. Because the mantis people that live in the draconian spheres are warring against them because they've come back up there after Satan had drawn all of the stars from that planet and cast them to the earth. They've been sent back there by God to re-inhabit that place that was was cast out by the tail of the dragon and and they have gone in there and they have taken a foothold Hallelujah. and they have taken a stand <clears throat> and recently in a revelation that I received when they received the revel a revelation when they were being attacked by these these mantis uh, 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 creatures from from Satan of uh, which the Bible says in revelations that one day when Satan comes down the pit of darkness is going to be opened and these locust mantis people are going to be down here uh, playing havoc on the people on the planet. It's all in the Bible. But in the meanwhile, this war is going on up there. Now recently, when they were being attacked, uh, the, um, the, these um, uh, Enoch offspring had developed a new weapon called the, called the Baleen. And, uh, um, uh, no, uh, the, the uh, Stringling. Sorry, the screenling. And what it does, because most of these um, uh, uh, mantis people are cloned, and they are so tightly cloned that, that if you kill one of them, 
Uh, it kills every one of the others that were in the same mold. And, and it's complicated, too complicated to explain here in the short time I have. But when they start using this uh, stringaline, they begin to kill off these mantis people uh, by the hundreds of the thousands. And since that time, they have not been back to attack the planet of Arturus. Oh, okay. And that doesn't mean they won't be, but they haven't been back for a long time. Oh, this yeah. is all the kind of stuff that I know that is going on. Is it far out? Yeah, it's a long ways there. <laughs> <laughs> And other kinds of far outs they be too. People might think all this stuff is crazy, but as